Welcome everyone, this is Piney Needles, and you're listening to Lotro Players News, where we take a look at the latest news in Lotro and here at Lotro Players. And this week, we have with us Terry Adwin. Hi, hi. Maven. Hey, y'all. Arthur. Hello, everybody. And Carvette. At your service. And your families. And this week ending is boycotting the show because it's our 50, 150th anniversary. <laughs> <laughs> totally not what happened. Okay. No, no, no. It's what happened. Boycotting. It's what happened. Oh, it's a yeah, great yeah, story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He had a he had a forced boycott. Yeah, for the 150th anniversary episode. 150th episode. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't think we've been here for 150 years quite yet. <laughs> no. Oh my god. They seem like it, but. <laughs> <laughs> We're like, welcome to Lotro Players News. Let's hit <laughs> Welcome to Lotro Players News, you whippersnappers. Yeah. Here we are, using this newfangled technology, coming at you across the digital airwaves. <laughs> Let's okay, hit so into apparently... the gay news. <laughs> Did you say the gay news? Game, Game. news. Game oh. news. This is going downhill quickly. This, yes. is, this is it, We're right finally. here. On Monday. Now, finally. See what happens when you leave a Zandang. No, we didn't change the order this week. Last time you left us, we completely changed the order of the podcast. That's we true. We did. Ch- we changed stuff. up the order of the show in and all, defense, all kinds of though, other stuff. In our defense, we were told he could possibly show up late, and so we kept moving around things that were ending specifically mentioned, so that well, he could potentially do that. Don't have permission this time. Let's oh, head into our up. game news. <laughs> 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 this week on Monday, May sixteenth, we had. Server schedule downtime, and why is it down? I don't know. I heard a rumor <laughs> that it's supposed to be eighteen point one, but I don't actually know if that was confirmed. I guess Freelorn said something on Thursday during his stream, but I don't get to watch the, his streams on Thursdays because I'm working. That, yeah, that appears to be the rumor, the current rumor. So the, the so, rumor is that it's eighteen point one, but I don't actually know because it doesn't say anything in the forum post. Uh, it's about. The right time of the cool. month for an 18. I was gonna one. say was it's gonna just say weird because it never went up on Boror. That they don't always if it's just it's, a small one. It's well, that time in the chat game. that 18.1 yeah. will be live on Monday. So whatever fancy whistles and bells and fixes are gonna happen in point one, we'll see it on Monday. Probably nothing major because since, as Terry pointed out, it wasn't on Bulwer, it means that won't be. <laughs> when 18.2 comes out, it, that will be on Bulwer because that's when the play is at the 8 rate. M- MKJP from chat says, um, it's not a rumor, it's on the launcher, guys. I'm like, what? People so no, no, the launcher says that? that there's an update to the game, but it doesn't actually say if it's 18.1 for sure. Right. And the no, post doesn't say it's 18.1 for sure. Yeah, sometimes... I don't actually be the launcher. Is there? I guess that would be a good thing to do. It says it says the actual downtime, but it doesn't say they're releasing. It says that it's, a, that it's an update, it's but it doesn't update. say eighteen yeah, point one. What the official update? Because the last so. time it was a downtime, they listed it as an update too, but it wasn't actually an update. Yeah, yeah, that was a well... hot fix. Sometimes a hot fix would get that, and sometimes it was eighteen point zero point like one, for or... example. Yeah. 0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.
today's is 75% off creep classes, so yeah. guess what I'm doing right now. Now's the time if you don't have one. I'm turbine there's, point grinding because I don't have enough turbine points for that. Uh, yeah. Uh, and speaking of wargs, Lotro Players News is brought to you by the pitter patter of little feet. When the goblins are running amok and the wargs are prowling, you've got to face the danger, but the little ones won't stop howling. There's only one thing left to do pack a bag for a day or two. Uncle Carve's Critter Sitter Service will take them without scowling. From unruly bearing cubs to hobbits with healthy appetites, we have a place for your little critter. We provide peace of mind to parents who are off to wild adventures and can't take the littles along. There are great activities for critters of all races. Lessons on the finer points of second breakfast, foot hair care, fishing, and pie eating. A 20 foot deep sandbox for the little diggers. A large open forested enclosure for your elven toddlers. Even a timeout cage. Mm, crib for the cranky Bayorning. Whether you have a brawling Bayorning, a half pine hobbit, a dwarven darling, an excitable elfling, or run of the mill human baby. Uncle Carve's Critter Sitter Service has the care you need. Uncle Carve's Critter Sitters, you can quest with confidence. <laughs> that is awesome. That's great. That's great. Let's start with the community events for May 13th through the 19th. Balrog's Football. All what? right. <laughs> what? This, is, Wait, what? this is so cool. What's going on? Bell Rocks uh, football. Oh, yeah, that's the concert stage. tomorrow, which I can't go to because it's during a time when I can't be in the game. Okay, moving on. Okay. But anybody. Uh, so it's like, it's like metal covers in Lotro. Yeah. Like metal bands, like real honest to goodness metal bands. That's so cool. I kind of want to be there, but I'll bet you I'll probably have something else going on too. Yeah, it's, it's on Laurelin. I seem to recall that this was an event last year, too, that I wasn't able to go to. I would just be curious to see what the good folks on Laurelin, or anybody for that matter, could come up with cosmetically for what constitutes a metal hobbit outfit. Or, what? or for any race. I mean, think about it now. You, you go to a concert like this, and you expect to see, like, change and spikes and mohawks and stuff. The dwarves could probably pull it off. You probably see some... Shirtless dwarves running around, maybe some tattooed up bjornings or what have you. But what, I mean, what would what would constitute appropriate Middle Earth attire to a hard rock concert? That's a good question. For a Hobbit, well, for sure the bandana from Isengard. The well, Isengard I mean, it's like bandana. it's like I can look at, oh, at um, my, my beard kisser biker outfit, right? And I'm like, okay, that would work. It's got black short sleeves. It's a leather vest. It's dark pants. It's boots. It's got a bandana. He looks tough. Fingerless gloves. You know, I could I could roll with that. But I'd be curious what like other races we, would wear. We need a bare chested Hobbit uh, cosmetic. <laughs> oh gosh, no. no. We, oh, no, we don't. No, we don't. A big old we pot really belly don't. sticking out. Yeah, big old pot <laughs> belly. I think that'd be awesome. No, <laughs> be something else, man. No. That's just not something I need to see in my life. I think I just created a mental image that nobody will be able to. No. Ever that is a correct statement. Uh, we we need that about as much as we need men in dresses. Okay. No, but only only if the Hobbit bare chested tattoo comes with a big t t pie tattooed across his front. Oh yeah, <laughs> that would be hilarious. Or bacon, or bacon. Yeah, bacon. bacon. He's got a couple strips of bacon like his <laughs> instead of instead of like tattooed rings on his arms, it's just bacon strips. <laughs> That's awesome. All right. Any other things that we want to point out on the community announcements today? <laughs> <laughs> then let's head on to the rally in Casa Doom on May 14th. But that's today. Today, yeah. That happens that's, today. That's why I put them like right after community events, because they're stuff that happens today that I wasn't able to go to. Yeah. Ah. And, <laughs> and we also have Spring Racing Carnival, which was also... Today. <laughs> today. So if you today. guys didn't encounter any of that stuff today, that would have been pretty awesome. Yes, and Small Lotro Adventures, episode 53, Warg Stew in Grimsdale. 
and you have to see it to understand it, <laughs> to understand the title. Yes. I'm, I'm not a fan of this. I've not seen it, but I'm not a fan of the title because no works do. I like wargs. I play a warg. <laughs> I would think a warg would be pretty gamey. You'd have to like seriously season it to make it into a decent stew. You need like the mother yeah. of all crock pots for that you, meal. Seriously, you would. I mean, I guess it can't be any worse than Hobbit, but I guess if you're a warg, meat is meat. So. No, Hobbit would be like. The fat. Uh, I'm not gonna describe it too much, but <laughs> Hobbit, Hobbit would cook quite nicely. They're they're little. Mm. Tender... But Bilbo says that he would cook better than he would cook. Yeah, that's right. Well, he he's also saying that to save his life, he's most likely a little bit biased and unknowledgeable about the subject. Speaking well, as Ward, <laughs> speaking as Ward, who has noms on many Hobbits, and has never cooked one of them, they're quite tasty raw. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Let's go into the family line, part 91, Lover's Loss. Crickets, because nobody wants to spoil Again, yes. I can't wait for this summer. I'm just going to sit and read all of these things back to back. And I, I'm just waiting for the story to be over, and then Tim can put out a PDF, and I'll just download that and read it. Yeah, you could actually, actually, Tim, that's a great idea. You could sell that. Yeah. Like, $3 on Amazon. And boom, I'd hey, probably man. get it. I believe it. <laughs> Hobbit is the fruit of the shire. You can barbecue and boil them, mash them, stick them in a stew. All right. Hobbit is the new stew. Hobbit, also, the other white meat. And we also have Palms of the Pine for dun, dun, dun. Book Nine, Fortress of the Nazgul. We alighted from our boat at the landing in Mirkwood, where the shadow did send shivers down our back. Our charge was to take the churlish Mazog into the deepest woods to Dogodor. <laughs> we slog through the swamp, sickened with death, where light did lure our leader to the west. Then we trek through webs that wasted our strength to leave our charge chilled with venom. We sought a cure in the silent tombs and revived the villain of vicious bent. We then made a deal at the dreadful gate, but the trade did end in betrayal and death. We broke into the keep and Bori did save. Our friend was free at last. Then Rowan slew Mazog with the mithril axe to end his reign of ruin. Yay! Awesome. Wee. <laughs> <laughs> how to skip a lot of skirmishes in doing that. <laughs> yeah, I noticed how you condense it all into like a couple of lines. Yes. <laughs> Stuff happens. No mention no mention of skirmishes in there at all. Well there well the very last scene does take place in a skirmish. I got it guys. I got it. New new a new couplet to add. Things happen, things died. We skirmished responsibly. <laughs> there you go. Uh, well, that wasn't exactly alliterative. Eh. Let's it's, hit it. Not bad for not bad for the time I was given. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Let's hit into the new player question for the week. Maven, do you have any questions for us? Yes, I want to talk about cosmetic pets today. Um, uh, where do you get them? What are they? What are they not? And what can you do with them? I can answer the what are they not. They're not real pets. They're not real pets. <laughs> Unfortunately. Yes, they are. They are not I want, combative. Like, any of them. They are not. Um, the, really, they exist purely as a cosmetic add-on to your character. So you can't click on them. Nobody else can click on them. You can't do anything with him except look at it and go, "Oh, there it is. It's a pet." And that's it's pretty following much it. me around. And, and in all honesty, there are settings in the game I think where you can turn them off so you don't have to look at other people's pets. Yes. Oh, really? And that's actually if you're if you're prone to lag, you can turn that setting off. Like in the Moors, you'll have a bunch of people with. It's annoying when it happens, but you'll end up with a bunch of people with, like, all their fire pets out, and it's really oh. frustrating because it lags everybody out. So yeah, you can just turn that setting off where you don't see them at all if you want. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah. Good idea. So for events so, um, things like that, you can just turn it off. 
Yeah, that's for events too. That's a good idea. Um, I, the attract. I know that there's like a collections. There's a on the collections panel, right? There's a pets section yeah, that shifts. gives you all the pets, and you can see what they are, and you can collect them if you want to, and all and that even good tells stuff. Tells you how to get them, and where to get them, and what you can get, and I mean, basically, they're just flavor. You can get everything from critters to mammals to reptiles to Baby Hewarns. Amphibians, actually. To, yeah, all you kind get, of things that you can get. You can get a baby Hewarn that goes to sleep and Z's <laughs> out. Trees. Um, I saw that one of the latest bingo ones is an ice worm. Oh, my yeah, gosh. Ice yeah, ice yeah, salamander. I saw yeah, that and I was ice like, salamander. It's really cute. Oh, my goodness. You know, you can if get, you want a little uh, you can also get the, uh You can also get your own little pony to follow your character around, which is amazing. Yeah, everybody's been... The people that have been doing bingo, it's like, why are these... Why are these horses running around all over the place? <laughs> yep. yep. It's great. And what's cool is some of the cosmetic pets aren't bind on a choir. So, like, um, I think it was Eldeleth got one of those ponies and then gave it to Bellarina during one of our Beard Kisser streams. Oh, and cool. so, oh, every now cool. and again, <laughs> yeah, so I think uh, Mrs. Carve named him, like, Mustache Kisser or something. <laughs> so, <laughs> now this little pony will follow us around at times. It's kind of fun. Um, That's a riot. How do you get them? There's a variety of different ways. So you hit Shift C, you look at your control panel, and have a look at all the different things that you can do and get and, and experience and yeah. enrich your gaming experience. Okay, so here's one of the key questions that that people ask: How do you rename your pet? Because of course, if you get a, seat, a, a cosmetic pet, you're not going to want to keep it whatever the name on Turbine is. You want to give it your own name. So how do you do that? Now Terry, I know knows how to do that. It's forward slash C pet space rename space whatever name you want to name your pet. Cool. Preferably Steve. Easy peasy. Preferably <laughs> Steve. Easy peasy. <laughs> Not. Yeah, no, I um, actually had a bunch of the early bingo pets because I was he was naming them after food. So there was like uh, chops and mutton, and and stew and kebab. Oh yeah, yeah. Like um, my uh, you Mrs. Should Carf- be before we started. <laughs> Miss, Mrs. Carves Bayorning has her pets named like light snack. And <laughs> after dinner mint and just a variety of different things. I'm like, okay. Y'all, y'all yeah. should know that my, my white swan is named Pillow, but my black swan is named Buddha. <laughs> nice. If you don't know, that's the name of my parrot who squawks in the background. That's for the listeners who don't know that. Yeah. So. Cool. Well, there you go. Well, Good. Arkin, uh, Arkin Stone Terry has a bunny rabbit, and it's named Vorpal. This is Vorpal <laughs> Bunny. My, my rabbit's a name is Carbenog. <laughs> I have a rabbit named Mile Wide because he's got a mean strike a mile wide. <laughs> oh. <laughs> same, same deal, same deal. I've way. got a blue lizard named yeah. Mushu. <laughs> That's awesome. And oh, my, questing par- my questing partner has one named Sechuan. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So we have them both out, you know, and they make noise like those blue lizards do. It's really funny. Anyway, so it's kind of, it's just fun, right? I mean, it's just fun. Yeah, yeah. They don't do anything. You can't, you know, but it's a little, maybe, it, I guess we could call it like a little expression of personality, I suppose. Yeah, it's, 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 it's basically flavor for the game, essentially. Right. Because, right. I mean, Lore Masters have had cosmetic pets for a while, but theirs you can actually click on. Well, that's because they right. replaced the yeah, it's regular a legit pet. pet. Yep. Right. It's a first so go over. out and start collecting those cosmetic pets, boys and girls. Yeah. If you want to be really brave, or you want to be really super dedicated, well, I think one of the hardest ones to get would be the Hot Manigans ones. Like yeah, the, chickens. The chicken. the chickens. Like the black chicken is really a pain in the butt to get. Well, I have a feeling with the opening of the league. Oh, yeah, maybe that will be that will that might be a, the members of the league might have an easier time of getting it. Yeah, if you play a lot, that's true. Yeah, that's true. True that. Yeah. All right. That does then, it for me. Then let's head into our week in Lotro and Carvette. What were you up to? Well, this week had a lot of fun. We um, took the Beard Kissers up to a Hobbit Farm Experience excursion in uh, Oat Barton in Evendim. Um, after doing a lot of hot and sweaty farming stuff for experience we uh learned how to do a backflip off of a rock into a pool 
I didn't realize you could do that in Lotro, but you can if you time your <laughs> flip emote with a well-timed forward push of your movement so that as oh. you're in the air, you jump off. It looks really cool. I was like, oh, that that Pete, I wonder if I could do that again another time. But um, <laughs> amongst other things, I finally got that Ent and Evendim to tank that derpy wood troll when you're trying to do that thing where you have to run up and hit the tree and then run back down and hit the roots and oh. back and forth. I finally got the Ent to actually hold the troll's attention so he wouldn't chase me the whole time. So that was actually quite exciting because I'm like, I hate this quest. And then another momentous thing that happened is that we broke 200 followers on our Twitch channel and we did oh. our first ever carve giveaway. Um, and so that was fun. And props to Belkownian, who I think is in chat. He won the giveaway. We, we gave away some turbine points. And um, we had a lot of fun. I was enjoying it this week. So, Maven, what did you do in Lotro this week? What did I do in Lotro this week? Well, um, Glordrail hit level cap again, so she's now at 105. And then, of course, today in her Hobbit gift, she gets an XP enhancer. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, that mess for somebody thanks, else. Turbine. That was pretty yeah. awesome. Uh, Moochie, my minstrel dwarf, that some of you may know if you watch uh, Grifflet's um, uh, stream from time to time, got his LI, and he leveled it up, and he's about to go in and shout at the Watcher, so he's really looking forward to that. And in addition to that, he also got a red skeleton horse in a loot box, so that was pretty exciting. So, other things went on, but that was those were the highlights. So, Aerith there, how about you? Um... So yeah, and Tom Bombadil's a jerk. Uh, uh, Why? Was he yeah, mean to you? I, that's what I discovered this week. My guardian's like, "Hey, I need your help to find things in in the forest." And he's like, "Okay, you should go here and do this, which is not in the forest." We almost, you know, get killed. And he's like, "Ha! Did you learn your lesson?" And we're like, "Didn't need to learn that lesson." Um, wow, that is a yeah. tricky thing. Do. Yeah, it is. It, I've actually never paid that much attention to the Epic Quest before until I realized how much of a jerk Tom Domino was being. So, yeah, that was annoying. Basically, <laughs> did the role play, role play stream, which was a lot of fun. Um, so yeah, did that on Monday. On Wednesday, I would bingo boffin. And normally, I level like one of my alts. So normally, I've been leveling my minstrel. But then I realized, hey, my guardian's not at level cap now. So I did some of the woes stuff in the new area. Um, on my guardian, and actually leveled my guardian for the first time in forever, and that was fun. And right did, now, did you do actually, did you do woes is our wed? Yeah, <laughs> I've been cute. I've been informed that Becca and I need to find a goat before our wedding. <laughs> <laughs> oh, if you do that, if you do that, I'm definitely coming to tickle it. Only oh, only if it's tickled on webcam. Yeah. <laughs> Carve that can that can be your thing. You can just find okay. It. I'll, I'll set that up for you. Yeah, you set I'm that up down. for. You. <laughs> Look at really go, what, what, oh, what? <laughs> <laughs> She's like, I don't think so. Yeah. What uh, they... Yeah. It's a thing with a capital T that rhymes with <laughs> it stands for pool. So, um, yeah. The, <laughs> right now, actually, what I'm doing is because of those flash sales, yay flash sales, that happen when I don't have enough turbine points, I want to get a couple more creep classes. <laughs> So right now is my last part of the week in Lotro where I am doing some Arid Lewin grinding. And I just experienced something that I've never experienced before in my life, which was that Grifflet has come online, popped up in the chat. Whoa. I've never I've never seen that before because I don't often play on Landreval. So yeah, that was a cool thing that happened. <laughs> <laughs> and that was my week. Terry, what'd you do? Well, among other things, Arkenstone Terry finally, finally, finally finished Volume 1 of the Epic Story at 20 levels over. Nice. Because <laughs> it was driving me nuts having it hanging out there, not completed, so I went back and did it at 20 levels over. And even at 20 levels over, you know that volume is still a real pain in the butt? Because oh, yeah, you're going is. here, and you're going there, and you're going all over the place. And then, randomly, they decided to port you to here, there, and yonder, and then they drop you in the middle of nowhere, and they're like, yeah, find your own way back, sucker. <laughs> mithril coin. Yeah, I yeah, totally used, nice. totally used a mithril coin. Um, and then I ran work pens and sword halls for the first time ever on the 
Sarissa in the Tuesday group and had never ever done those instances before. So did it on the level 60, whatever level they are characters on Tuesday and predictably wound up dead in sword halls, which ended up with me uh, singing in sword halls because I had nothing, nothing better to do. So I have lyrics. I have, I have partial lyrics because, you know, I, I don't generally re-lyricize songs, but Another Tuesday night, and I'm dead in an instance. The healer couldn't keep my burg alive. Oh, how I wish that I wasn't so squishy. Guess I'll wait for the revive. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> it's, it's just sums up pretty much every Tuesday. <laughs> every time. It, it doesn't matter because, yeah, okay, I'm splat. And then the other thing I the other thing I did on Tuesday before I went and got killed in the sword halls is I joined Gussie Moose on her stream on Tuesday because she's doing a thing where every Tuesday she picks a different server, she throws up a poll on Twitter over the weekend so that people can vote for which server she should do. And this week's server was Landraval, so I joined her on Tuesday for low level deed grinding on Landraval, nice. which I was going through all of my characters about. 20 minutes before the stream going, okay, which one, which character have I not done the Air Lewin quest on <laughs> yet? Who has not done this stuff yet? Yeah, I can hear you there. Yeah, and so it turns out that like 13 of my characters have completed Air Lewin Metadate already. Oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, it's easy to do. Very. Yeah. Hour and a half, two hours. Not two hours. Yeah. Two, between two and three, depending on how you run it. Yeah. Well, actually, yeah, well, more like an hour and a half if you get, if you, if you use the little booster thing. For the de oh, for the Slayer D booster, you use it's a little booster thing. It takes next to no time to knock well, those details. Yeah. Well, like, do you have the thirty minute or the, the the half hour and a half one? Well, if you if you use the hour and a half one, it's an hour and a half tops. But really, you only need to use that for the Hendra Veil. Everything else is easy. Yeah. Right. I mean, I, I don't yeah. even bother using it because I just. I usually don't. Cut. Yeah, we did Hendra Veil, then we went up and killed spiders, and we came back and did more birds, and then we were done. Uh, so, Pineleaf, what were you up to this week? All right, I'll begin with Arkenstone, where I was in Minas Tirith with my warden, and I ran the pre-siege parts of the epic storyline for Minas Tirith. So, therefore, next we'll go on to Gladden, where on my Bjorning, I started with the Helm's Deep epic battle, so the first two epic battles there for the dike and for the deeping wall, and I was given a stark reminder on why I don't like epic battles. You have my sympathies. Yeah. <laughs> and my axe! Yes. <laughs> I'm not... It's like all the things... The, the biggest thing I can remember is that when I was doing the side quest where you're supposed to keep the sappers from blowing up the wall, the gate. Uh-huh. Oh, I mean, yeah. I was really doing well on this one. I was, you know, like, tearing them apart and all this fun stuff. Oh, my. And then I stopped, sappers stopped coming. And I'm wondering, what's going on? Then I suddenly got a message saying, the horse, one of the horses has been released. And what are the horses being released for? I mean, <laughs> we're on the sappers one. I long ago finished one with the horses. And it turned out that one of the sappers went to the stable and was stuck in the stable. And apparently he attacked one of the horses. Oh, jeez. And so I nice. finally went around there, found this sapper, killed the sapper, hoping that would unfreeze the... But it was too late. Apparently, there maybe there was a sapper, and the sapper struck, stuck somewhere else or something like this because that that one didn't finish. So even though, so I think that was the best I've ever done on that particular side quest, and I got zero credit for it. I got treated as oh. fail because it got bugged out, oh. and I, I almost <laughs> thought that the instance was bugged out because. The epic battles seem to be taking longer to finish than they used to. That's all I could say. Because they feel about two, about twice as long as the last time I did one. Maybe that's just perception. And later on, on the same character, when I was doing the wall, yeah, it, it, it felt like it was going... I said, why, 
I felt like it was going on and on and on and on and on. Please finish the bell. <laughs> <sighs> well, anyway, that was it. And I decided that for the for the second one, because this is for my Bjorning that's doing the video series, when I was doing Deeping Wall, I decided, all right, it's, it's too much like the Hornberg one, so I decided, no, I was not going to record an episode doing this. And I think, okay, I think I just saved my viewers a major headache by not recording that one. <laughs> that's what I got to say about that. And then on Bingo, Bingo Boffin, I was doing my usual stuff on there. I did it you know, first on my minstrel, then I, and everything, okay, fine, all this. Then I did it on my Bjorning, okay, everything, fine. Then I did it on my Hunter for my recording, or to record my episode, and, oh, why did that change? And, and, I, and I realized, oh, I didn't realize, they apparently the Bingo Boffin storyline for this week changes like different depending on whether or not you finished volume three. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So there, so I was doing a double thing because I think because I, the reason one reason why I do it before I do the recording is so that I don't have any real huge prizes when I'm running and they go boom. <laughs> what? Mm, interesting. So, so I had this big surprise right in the middle because I thought I knew everything that's happening. No. <laughs> hmm. All right, so let's then head into our moot for the week. And what are the pros and cons of Eridluin, the Blue Mountains? And we'll begin with the books. And do they even talk about Eridluin in the books? I was going to say, yeah, I mean... Um, they do. I mean, they not, do. But historically... Not like the main plot story yeah it's very friends. it's very historical references to like these are where the dwarves came from and there were these things and there's great civilizations and then the world broke up and all of that's lost and so what's left i'm sure is... there's some information in the book somewhere because otherwise we wouldn't have had an episode on it for middle earth lore <laughs> exactly i kind of i do kind well, of wish that there was more though about... it was hard actually you know he spent most of the time talking about the dwarf stuff you know for yeah, the about movie. Casa Doom and the like yeah, yeah it was that's yeah. because was we didn't really have a whole lot of stuff about or, well this exactly. goes back to kind of what I said in the last time we had a moot is that Tolkien was an elfin fanboy so he didn't really dwell a whole lot on the other races so <laughs> I mean Arid Lewin has some elves it's sort of between where the Grey Havens and the Shire are so it's like an area that Tolkien didn't care much about, so we don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I think it's it's an important area in terms of the stories and and especially the whole going west part of things. It's an important area. Um, I always. Well, I always, and I. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. I always <laughs> did like feel like we're missing something. Like I I always wished for more in the Blue Mountains because we always hear about it and it's always talked about with like longing about going to the west and over the mountains and over the sea but we never really hear as much about the mountain as he's as he'd kind of like you know and i i think if if and i don't know it very well kindly if you probably know it better than i do but i think if you know the silmarillion and the story about how the lands changed and you know what what was there before shut up buddha um <laughs> she's um, it, it has more meaning, you know, like, yeah, but really you have does. to kind of infer it. You have to infer it. You know, it's not really, I mean, he doesn't talk about it in Lord of the Rings, really. Uh, yeah, that's and that's the we... thing is that you, you definitely get, there's this, 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 um, richness of background, but all you get are glimpses of it. You don't really know what all happened. Um, I'm not familiar with free breaking of the world geography at all. Um, so I wouldn't even know what was in Ered Lewin prior to like the Cimmerillion and whatnot, or in the beginning of the Cimmerillion. Because I mean, weren't there like some pretty significantly sized dwarven and or elven cities around? Oh, yeah. The Ered Lewin oh, yeah. Places? Belagost and yeah. Nor Norgrund, I think it was called, and Belagost and, yeah. you know, Menegroth and you know though yeah huge of course and gondolin of course but yeah ah, so. gondolin was an erdolin okay in the blue yeah. that's what i, I thought. think well, well i don't know if it was blue uh, it was, actually, I, I think it was actually it was where in, it was, was in the lands that did, 
Yeah, I mean, it, it was in the lands that ended up getting, I think, drowned. Yeah. Oh, so if we were like form a Middle Earth like, um, you know, aquatics club, we could go looking for the lost city of Gondolin. If we were to, you know, well, figure out how to make air breathing underwater. Yeah, thing. I mean, I think if you look plainly, if you, I mean, I have, I can dig it out. I got the 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 book that maps of Middle Earth. But I think if you, what what we know is the Blue Mountains in 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 in, in modern day Middle Earth, <laughs> <laughs> um, we're actually quite a distant east. In the old, in the first age, and That's I think correct. the second. Age. Ah, that makes sense. A whole bunch that of got grounded. That makes sense. This is like yeah, the Middle Earth version of Atlantis. Because yeah, exactly. I was about to say that part of <laughs> part of what Tolkien's fascination was with Numenor is Numenor was originally his word for Atlantis. Ah, oh, right. And and the story is very similar. The story about a, about a vast, impressive civilization being swallowed underwater. Um, and I'm actually, it's it's cool because we're actually reading this stuff right now with Signum University, like the course I'm taking with Inklings and in Science Fiction. Tolkien wrote a story called the the Notion Club Papers, and a large part of that is sort of like a time travelish thing. To I mean, I haven't got a chance to finish reading it, and partially because it's not come yet, and the preview that I found online wasn't entirely full. Um, but it involves, you know, it's, it concerns itself in large part with Numenor before yeah. it was part of his Middle Earth yeah. epic. So yeah. the, the concept of Atlantis and, and, and Gondolin and the fall of Gondolin and, and Numenor and all that, like it's the fall of a civilization is huge for Tolkien. So kind of coming from that, like, oh, it's the Blue Mountains. It's sort of like the last reminder in Middle Earth of what was west of it before. Right. Now, here is something I heard, and I don't know if this is true or not. I wanted to get a second opinion because it's kind of sort of related to this, but not really. Since we're talking about the sinking of these ancient civilizations, wasn't there some kind of idea that the Numenorians were in some ways a very technologically advanced society? Mm-hmm. Sort of, yeah. Ish. Like, I mean, they had tech that I mean, they discovered and the right used. Word, yeah. Yeah, yeah, or no, like maybe magically influenced tech, tech but, per yeah. se, well, that they well, wouldn't have now. It depends on how you define tech because when you yeah. – because when you think about tech, now I know we think of tech very often today as electronics and stuff like this, but when you say right. in their time, tech means having some very sophisticated things that there are other people don't have. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I think what's really interesting is actually the, the way that Tolkien words it. And again, I wish I had it. I could like point my finger right to the passage. But he talks about – because you know, they were there for many generations. And he talks about the Numenorians sailed far and wide and visited other lands where they were considered gods, which immediately made me think of ancient Incan, ancient Mayan, Egyptian. You know what I mean? It's like it, he, yeah. Tolkien doesn't actually say it. But I definitely got the impression of, you know, that's like the, you know, like that's what the Egyptian gods were and the, and the Mayan gods. You know, it's, it's like that fits so nicely. I just thought that's pretty mm. cool. That's kind yeah, of one thing Tolkien, Tolkien always took care of was to make things fit nicely. Like even his creation myth, he was a devout Catholic, but he made sure that nothing in it really contradicted things right. in the Bible. Like he made, he made, things, he made things fit nicely. And I was like, oh, so there's even in some of the in some of that we along those lines in some of the um, unpublished you know, the stuff that's in uh, history of Middle Earth now there's even you know there's even a way to fit in the uh, Garden of Eden story in uh, in, oh, yeah. in this thing yeah, yeah it's really interesting yeah well one of the things I've always really appreciated about um, about Lord of the Rings in general I mean Lord <laughs> of the Rings in general is that when Tolkien describes things that other lores would construe as magic, it's really more of an innate understanding of the world at large. And it basically translates more as lore. And so the idea that the Numenorians were more attuned through process of discovery or what have you, so what they considered tech was really just an understanding of the world at large. And that's how I've kind of always understood like some of the elven stuff that they can do. It's not so much magic as it is understanding of the world and how to use it and manipulate it to their own ends. Yeah, and, and he talks about so, actually about magic and elven magic specifically in yeah. on fairy stories. In his essay on fairy stories. Yeah. If, so, yeah, it really does feel like really cool. despite despite the lack of concrete uh, information about the Blue Mountains in the Lord of the Rings. It really does seem like it is an like an important area because of how much it means yeah. for everything that came before it, you know? 
But again, you kind of have to infer it. Yeah. Because you know, he doesn't really do a lot in the books. All right. Then I guess the big con is the lack of stuff in the books. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'd say. That yeah, would be more blue. <laughs> we want more blue. And more uh, blue. Our blue. That's cool. All right. Then let's head then into the films and... What do they do with the Blue Mountains in the films? Nothing. Not in Lord of the Rings, they don't. I think with, with the exception of very few references you get with kind of the dwarves traveling stories in The Hobbit, there really isn't Yeah, The anything. Hobbit's the only place to really see it. Yeah, I mean, you, you Ironically get some mentions. Enough, no. The Hobbit's the time you get the lore. Go figure. Yeah, and, there's, that? and there's that yeah. one scene where they see the elves going the other way. Oh, right, yeah. yeah. Well, you get like you get like a couple of scenes where Thorin's talking about what about the, uh, the the dwarves from the Blue Mountains, and you get um, right. some flashbacks of some of the different places Thorin has been. You kind of get the impression he's worked all over the place, including the Blue Mountains, but you really don't get much at all. No, like, yeah. snippets. I mean, even sound bites. Even when they go through the uh, like going west part, mm -hmm. they skip the place entirely. Really. Yeah, all it's you get bummer. is a little bit of the a little bit of the Shire because that's where the characters we care about are, and then the Blue yeah. Mountains are like, oh yeah, they're just this kind of geographical thing on a map. Like when, yeah, right when they past. when they go west, when when Bilbo it's just and a line. And stuff, go west. <laughs> all they get like, is like okay. a drawn line across the map. They don't even get yeah. actual mountains. <laughs> <laughs> it was too expensive to shoot on location there. We just drew a line, just like the Indians. <laughs> It'll be all right. Right. Okay. So I guess that sounded like your cons for the. the I mean, there really wasn't much lack to talk of, about the, the, or no, con that in the films. Like the yeah. that we had for the yeah. book. So let's go into yeah. the game actually represented. So oh, the... you know what? Go Pros ahead. For the game. Good place for TP grinding. 140 TP in about two hours. <laughs> <laughs> That's one of the pros in the games. Plus, you can do it as an elf or, or a dwarf, or any race for that matter, but it's the starting place for elves and dwarves. And what I like about Erdluin in the game is it's an insanely diverse climate. You've got this luxurious tropical elven resort on the one end, and you've got this <laughs> stalwart, garish, and fantastically snowed in dwarven, you know, uh, fortress on the north end and there's all kind of different climate changes you've got this like rustic mountain cabin in the middle and then you've got like yeah, the it's... dwarven fortress in the harbor and it's, it's not really as cool. diverse as as uh oh what's the one place with the with the freaking thing where you go up and down the mountain six bajillion times oh that's uh Enidwaith. Enidwaith. it's not as diverse as Enidwaith, but it is oh yeah it's like and i will say it has it is it's own... overly diverse yeah <laughs> It's like, here's Middle Earth. It's basically the New Zealand of Middle Earth. Um, <laughs> yeah, kind of. But I, I don't know. I like Erid Luin. It's pretty. And the more you it's, go through it, it the more pretty. times you do it, it's like, yeah. ah, there's really nothing here that can kill you. <laughs> well, it's like you yeah, find different things, too, that you've probably never seen before. If you just take a, a left and take a little bit of a different sidetrack, you'll find stuff. Like if you're down there just north of the dwarven port uh, Keladul and you're killing spiders if you look across the river there's an entirely different ruin over there that's obviously older than dirt uh, maybe New Monorian, we don't know but you can't get to it because it's on the other side of one of those invisible walls but it's this huge fortress just kind of there for your eye candy in the distance and um, Coldfells and I actually were one time we were having a discussion we were doing a, a TV run like what is that Sigildry over there we we're trying to figure out what kind of crest was on it, and the nearest I could figure it was Numenorean stars of the scepter because it looked very similar to some of the stuff in Evendim. But I was like, I don't know. Oh, we're, we're all like, you have to our take eyes and... there. I know we were sitting there like trying to pretend like we had binoculars to look across the river to see if we can <laughs> zoom in. <laughs> but I mean, yeah, and there's there's just a lot of stuff in some of these kind of backwoods areas of Ered Luin that if you don't take the time to go up there, you wouldn't even know. Even though the Ward Spires, that one exploration point, it's way out in the stinking corner of the zone there's stuff like up along that northern border I've never gone to that I might check out one of these days alright so what about the cons to the games version of Aragorn I have fallen off 
those freaking elf whatever the heck they are <laughs> more times than I've ever fallen off of anything in Moria. It's like, really? It's possibly it's... the only place in the game where you can die at, like, level two. <laughs> yeah. Because you yeah. can actually die in the starter zone if you are careless and walk off a bridge. Or those windy stairs. Yeah, they had this um, section the that... Pulls. The one that I remember the most was back in the old to, to, to the old version of the starter area before they revamped it where you had to go up to switch back all the way up to the top and the first time you're playing it before you know what you're doing you say maybe I should take maybe I could take this shortcut <laughs> just a little bit too high you know I'm pretty sure my mom took that shortcut at one point and yes. she didn't die, but she got stuck in a hole. Yeah. <laughs> and I kept Just trying to bad. tell her how to get out of it, and she was telling me that it wasn't working, all the solutions I gave her. So I finally ended up having her log in, and she showed me where she was, and I'm like, I don't even know where you are. <laughs> slash stuck. <laughs> yeah, so, slash so stuck. I, yeah, slash stuck. And, I think and... my my biggest downside to Ered Luin is called Wrath to Reg. <laughs> the place sucks. Well, it's a goblin infested. It's an in everything hole. infested. Yeah. Like, well, I, mean, I mean, it's fun. I like Wraith it, like It's fun to do with friends, but otherwise, it's just like it's a pain in the butt because everything's like elites and you got to go. It, yeah. uh, you, you don't have to. I have Wraith Drag down to a science. There's only one spot that you have to be careful for an elite if you're doing the deeds solo but if you do the epic you get that last location as part of the final epic instance and you don't have to fight the elites nice Ooh, nice. Yep. That's, why I, that's why I always do the epic when I'm TP grinding through there is because you get that last Wraith to Egg point which is at the end on landscape of this huge ridge full of a lot of elites but if you do it in the epic you get dwarven and elven help yep mm -hmm. yeah so do Plus the epic to egg. prevent your after egg? Uh, no, you, you you do you do that initial epic quest that has you run through there doing like um, kill so many goblins, and you can hit yeah, a little bit of scouting. Like four of the five locations by doing a loop through Wraith to egg. Plus you'll get spiders um, and goblins if you need those for a racial deed and or for. Um, your your final deeds like I never bother to stop and grind goblins when I'm Aerith when TP running because oh, I yeah, know I'll get to. them throughout whatever. But you there's a humongous spider den at the south end of that that they just literally pop out of the ground so fast. Um, it's great to do with an AOE. Yeah, like two passes you can finish oh, yeah. the entire. Yeah, day. there's twenty like twenty spiders in there and they they respawn super fast. But that being said, you you finish your spider deed, you go okay, out. Move. And then you get your final little epic, and you go back in for an instance, and it takes you right up to the top where Crookdale is. So you get that exploration deed super easy. Right. That's the way I always do it. Which is one of the things I like about Wraith to Egg, is because once you know the route through there, you do one loop, and you've got a bunch of extra XP, you've got your Slayers, and you've got your Explorers. One of the cons, I, I think I've heard it expressed that the lack of handrails and Elven architecture weeds out the weak ones. <laughs> yeah, I can see that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, now my thing, though, is the first time anyone goes to Sarnir and not know the concept of <laughs> ancient dwarf dwarf damage. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah Sarnir's in a whole. Or other if you place. wander up that way before you're at Ooh, level. Oh, when you're do when you're a newbie going through the low side of it and you make a wrong yeah. turn. Oh man, they're purple. I can take them. <laughs> oh snap, I'm dead. So much for the undying. <laughs> yep. That happens too. Uh, I'm sure, yeah, that happens quite a bit. That is I that can't... is one zone that is just monotony to find. Sarner. Because the Slayer D's in there are like like 450 total I think on some critters That's... maybe a little bit less yeah. like 360 or something I mean it is like monotony to find you have to go in there unless unless you're like at level cap it takes forever I found that the easiest way to 
is to go in there long enough to get the low end items for that you need to purchase some of the rep rewards with, uh-huh. and then get the rest of the rip at the skirmish camp. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I I exactly. don't even bother going in there. I well, tried on you, my guardian, and I was like, eh. Yeah, you do uh-huh. need the low end crest you need in order for barter though. So, but you could go to the AH for them probably. But they won't uh, well, be available. actually. If you're just looking to get Thorns Hall rep, you might as well go up to the Ice Reef Mine in Forkel, and you'll get Forkel rep and Thorns Hall rep at the same time. Well, yeah, there is that also. If you're going to go up... inside, tips and tricks from Lutra Players <laughs> oh, News yeah, experts. Man. It's all kind of cool stuff you can do. <laughs> all right. Anything um... else to say about Erlewine for pros cons for any of the three? Well, the first two we couldn't really find anything it's good for turbine point grinding <laughs> yeah i mean you can get 140 turbine points in two to three hours depending on how fast you are and how quick you are with a with a minstrel if you're playing oh minstrel and then there's the treasure hunt which is been known oh. to cause um shall we say more colorful metaphors to erupt from people's mouths who are very picking um <laughs> <laughs> Well, the no treasure hunt's another fun about. thing. I have no idea. No, no. Um, you, you stuck your finger on a thorn. Um, but yeah, there, there's, there's that too. I mean, there's a lot of neat stuff in Erdolin. If you have not leveled a elf or a a dwarf and you want to check it out, it's totally worth taking your hobbit or your man out for a spin. Actually, I was playing with somebody a couple weeks ago who'd never been in Erdolin. They'd always leveled up men. So I was like, dude, we're, we'll do a TP grind through Ered Lewin then. And we ran through, I guess, two-thirds of it before I had to go. And he was like, wow, I've never been here before. I'm like, you haven't? Wow. Welcome. Carve turns into a tour guide. On your right, you see Nagelhorn. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of like that, actually, yeah. I, I, I mean, I've done it enough times for TP as well as just leveling different characters that I can probably tell you where the best spots to farm which critter are. Easily from memory. <laughs> On your left, you'll see that there are four spawn points for typically Hendervale. Kill them, come back, and then they're going to be there again. We currently have 25 supporters on Patreon, and if you would like to join this illustrious raid of players to help support Lotro players, simply go to the donations page where you can support the Players Alliance on Patreon. There you'll find rewards, including a mention on the podcast of your choice, or even be a guest with us here on Lotro Players News. And this week we have a featured comment from Lily Kate, who reminded us in Mixer chat, Oh, Lizzie and I are planning to record an Ask Us Anything episode. So send us some questions, please, at lilycatebuggins at gmail.com. Cool. Cool. And if you would like to contact us, you could email us at podcast at lotoplayers.com. You could also follow us at Twitter, the Players Alliance at Players Ally, Loto Players at Loto Players, Anding at PVMP underscore Anding, Erethert at Erethert, Carvet at Carvet LP. Maven at Tolkien Maven, Pineleaf at Pineleaf Needles, and Terry Adwin at Terry Adwin. The Players Alliance has four live shows. Every Monday at 8.30 p.m. U.S. Eastern Time, we have DDO Players News. On the last Friday of each month at 8.30 p.m. U.S. Eastern Time, we have Lotro Academy After School. Every Saturday at 8.30 p.m. U.S. Eastern Time, we have Lotro Players News. And every other Saturday after Lotro Players News, we have Tales of the Free Folk. But this week's episode is being postponed till next week due to Andane going to a party. <laughs> Pretty sure that was all one breath, too. You can join us for, you join us for our live show at LotroPlayers.com slash live. Thank you, everyone, for listening. And this is Pineapple Needles reminding you to skirmish responsibly.